first of all, thank you to everybody involved in WAF. Thank you for the, the prize yesterday. It was really exciting to, to our group. Uh, my name is Fernando Sordo Magdaleno. And uh, I'm going to talk to you about the project we're currently building in, in Tulum, in Mexico. So, um, our project is located at, in the Yucatan Peninsula in uh, Mexico, as you can see in the picture. And it's located in the Mayan Riviera. You can see all these, uh, this white line is, is representing all the Mayan Riviera, that it's a really historical um, part of Mexico, and we're located uh, in Tulum. If you see, all the hotels are on the beachfront, and uh, the downtown of Tulum, you can see that really dense spot on all the green part of, uh, of the peninsula. And there's a development that they're doing that it's a commercial, residential, and you can see the streets that were taken for them. This picture was uh, a few years back. Actually, it has been uh, already developed. And uh, we have three major components happening in, in, in this place. You have, the, obviously, the Caribbean Sea, the, the, these amazing tones, light, reflections. Then you have the real presence of the archaeological site. Uh, we have the Mayan new ruins all over the place. And there's another element as the cenote, that is a really emblematic uh, space in Mexico. It's the third image we can see here. So these, these first images that we started to, to analyze were really interesting in the design. This is an image of the archaeological site. And we can see how the greenery and, and, and the tropical forest is a tropical uh, climate. We have a really steady temperature throughout the year. We have a lot of um, rain through May to September. But you can see how the greenery becomes part of the, of the building and, and how it shows you like a sense of permanence. This is another image of the archaeological site. And you can see these really straight lines with straight edges. And you can see all this green mat going through all the building and giving it a sense of place. So this was uh, really, really important. And then we have the du duality that in the, all the hotels and the Tulum is eco-friendly, eco chic that's some, some term. But um, you can see these less permanent buildings that are made of raw, that are, have this wood like that, that functions like textile. So that duality was really important to us. And then our project is in this development that it's going on in, in Tulum, that it's in the tropical forest. And in the tropical forest, you, uh, you start to see these type of constructions. Like you have these really rigid uh, walls going 60 meters and, and this central courtyard. You, you can only build up to three levels here and you can have a rooftop. So the major concept was to really find that scale, that human scale, that human spatial scale, like a level or, or maximum two levels so the, the first strategy was to lift the, the building 70 centimeters to not impact the wildlife that it's going through the, the topography. Then we started to generate these, these spaces, these negative spaces that we like to, to say. And then we, we started to turn the building to really don't create a boundary between the street and the building. And look like it, like a really porous and uh, uh, building. And we repeat that same mechanism. So when you see the building, you are starting to see just one level elements. And that, for us, it, it started to see less rigid. And that, what is really interesting, is that it creates the negative space. So what you see here in the diagram is all the spaces that are in between these elements that become the 50% of the buildable area. We have uh, 10,000 uh, square meters of buildable area and we have 5,000 that are exterior. So you have 50% of the, the square meters that you're selling are in the outdoors. Obviously, we needed to do some strategies. These spaces obviously let the light in, let the ventilation, the cross ventilation. And then this is the final product, the project with the rooftops and the different. 
this is a sketch we did, and we tried to explain how the building want, we wanted it to work with the cross ventilation, the different uh, sunlight going through the building, and that was some of the things that we wanted to create. So you can see the, 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 the first renderings of the building, and you can, see, uh, you can see throughout the building. That was something that we really liked. You can see the stacked volumes that regenerate all these double height, single height story experiences. And, and we, we started to see that the opportunity of the negative space was really interesting. And here, this is a cross section. You can see the, the concept that I was talking about. You can see the rooftops. Uh, the um, upper levels have their own rooftop with their own stair staircase going through their terrace to their rooftop. And this is the floor plan. So w the, the thing is that we're in the major road. We're just in the entrance of the development. That was the first roundabout. It's the most important roundabout. And this is the street. So we wanted to create an environment that really felt like Tulum, but uh, into the interior. All the volumes that you see that are uh, um, with the views to the, to the street are commercial. We have uh, 800 meters of commercial interior and 8 meters of commercial exterior. All the parking that you see through the street is the parking. Um, obviously, we're not doing anything. Just We're just cleaning the site and everybody's going to park there. And then we have the residential parking in the back. So everybody in the, in the residential goes through the back and every in the commercial comes through the front. We have um, eight different cir vertical circulations. There's no dark corridors. That's what's really interesting. And when you enter, you can see the, the paths are public, common. They take you to each vertical circulation. And the green spots that you see in the, in the center, they are, they are private. This is an image of that corridor. So you started to see this really the resemblance with the tectonic of the Mayan architecture, but the really delicate techniques that are used today in the, in the community. These are the first floor, floor plan. As you can see, all the vertical circulations, you don't have any, any corridors. And, and the main thing of, about the plan was we wanted for the bedrooms to, to see the, these voids, these like, like cenotes, you know, with all the light coming through. And the more public space is going and uh, seeing all the terraces and the, and the open space. So you can see here the ratio, how the, the open space, that it's obviously covered with the volume upstairs. It's really interesting because it's a lot of uh, square meters. This is an image of, of how this negative space of the terrace starts to behave. This is the second level where you can, here we did put some two elevators that take you to all the, all the apartments in this level because obviously to go up three, two levels was too much. This is an image of another rendering of the, the negative space. And this is the, the rooftop floor plan. You can see the private rooftops are on the lower part and the upper part. And the interior or the middle uh, volume, it's, it's all amenities for all the people to share. It's another image of the renderings of the rooftops. And this is the structure. Uh, we started construction two months ago. We, we think we can achieve to have the the building opening in 2020, in summer. And the structural part, we inverted the slab. We put all the beams on the top so we can get all the different electricity, water going through these slabs into the core and, go, and to go down. We didn't want to have a, a drop ceiling on the, in any place of the project. So um, this was a, a, a really nice strategy. This is another image of how it looks at night. And these are some solar studies that we did and how the geometry um, really maintains all these patios and internal cenotes or these spaces, open spaces, they, they maintain really cool. And, uh, and actually with the geometry and the strategy of the facade, we are um, achieving 25% uh, less 
energy consumption. And this technique, the bajareque, it's called in, in, in the Mayan nat uh, nature tongue, it's, it's been used for a long, long time. This was used in the Mayan homes, actually, and we're using this same technique in the building. So we're bringing in the community. The community is going to work. Uh, that's what we think is truly sustainable, to have the, the people that live in this place to work on the buildings that are being built. And we think it's really interesting to bring all their, their knowledge into the construction part. This is another image, and this is how we maintain the, the, the lower slab as the, the, the finish of the, of the roof. And this is um, the last rendering. And um, it's, as you can see, it's the same image, but at night. And we think it's, it's the, the, the greenery in the, in the facade. Obviously, it's for energy, but the sense of, of pertinence as well, uh, the sense of that it belonged to a place, and, and because those values were obviously from the past, and we were inspired in the nor their archaeological sites. So um, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. So the idea of the sort of overgrown temple is a very compelling one, with the greenery sort of growing through it, sort of percolating every every sort of poor and growing over time. So I just wanted to ask you, is this a holiday flats or is it people can buy them? Uh, yeah, they, they're for sale. For Actually, sale. They, yeah, they, they sell 25% of the units. And yeah, they're holiday retreats. So it's like a timeshare or like time a timeshare. Time yeah, yeah, okay. Exactly. So the, the integrity of the greenery is very important to the success of the scheme. So I just wondered who looks after that? Yeah. If people, it, uh, is it down to individual dwelling owners, or is there a central? How is it irrigated, trimmed? You know, yeah. how how does that work? Yeah, the good thing is that obviously all the vegetation is from the site, so we're in a tropical uh, climate, yeah. so the the vegetation doesn't need any maintenance. Well, we need to clean it and and cut it. That that, but um, that's gonna be in the condominium. So everybody gonna pay a uh, monthly okay. rent. For so the that's taken care of yeah. communally. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly. Commonly, yeah. Okay. okay. Christine. Um, yeah, I was interested uh, listening to your references to the Mayan architecture, the fact that, you know, it has become very established because there's a lot of greenery that sort of covers the ruins. Um, and then also to, to building techniques and the fact that you know, there is this slightly looser shack type architecture on the coast. So I think the references are very clear, but one of the things that I suppose I'm less clear about is actually references to the immediate context. You know, what are the buildings like actually on either side and behind mm -hmm. and in front is it because this doesn't actually front on to the, the sea does it no it's right. no yeah we have um the main street runs throughout all the all the plot and we have obviously a, a three level building on the other side of the of the so that's why we wanted to create all these spaces in between the building so we didn't need to live with the exterior views we wanted to to really have a, a really nice place inside and create these little moments that really generate that type of the what you want to feel when you're in your in your beach house or your tropical house and, and now that you've sort of clarified you know what the building is for in the sense that you know they are timeshare apartments when you get to these internal spaces do you have an internal courtyard for one apartment or are they shared? Uh, no, every apartment has its own uh, own terrace that it's privately owned. Uh, we have different uh, spaces that are common. I can show you. Well, the rooftops are in the, in the upper and lower are, are you know private, and in the center are common. And in the other floor plans, as you can see, um, they have their own different uh, public. Uh, outdoor spaces each each apartment has and in the first level you can see here
prints and the technique of the of these uh, textiles of wood, uh, we're we're controlling temperature and privacy as well. So it's a doable. It's it's a two two things that we're controlling with that technique. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Karen. Okay. The last rendering. Yeah. Can you just explain to me? No, go back to the plan because oh, I'm not understanding the rendering. Where is the rendering from? The re oh. but, but there's lots of space in your rendering in front of the building. I'm a little bit struggling with the scale um, because you started off speaking about breaking it down into these little smaller scale things and then when you come to that last rendering it's a, this, it's a very overpowering and I think the previous question was those private gardens <coughs> that are on the other plan, I think it's one plan lower down. Uh, down or? Uh, this, uh, this one? That or is the middle level. Yeah. So y the answer oh. just now about the private gardens, the private courtyards, where are they? Uh, the private ones are here. And uh, where are they on the rendering? That's what I don't understand. Maybe just take us. The interior rendering? The external rendering. Uh. To the external window. There. Yeah. Okay. So those, the, yeah. those are the private courtyards. Yeah, exactly. These are the private courtyards. They're not so private anymore because on the plan they look like a, like a space, and it's more of a, an open. I just wanted to see that. The one thing I wanted to mention is that you showed a really beautiful section which started talking about materials, the air moving through the building, and maybe it is because of the computer rendering that some of that is lost. And I just think that section was very interesting in terms of the materiality and, and how this thing was going to... Um, yeah. yeah, I think the scale, for me, there's, it's difficult to understand the scale in terms of the renderings, and yeah, there we go. It's a lovely drawing. And I got really Thank you. intrigued by this because it looked like we, we were going to come up with something completely different. And then I think the minute you, one goes into computer, you land up being caught up with uh, a lot of solidness. This is very light and it, it's just unusual. Yeah. And for that climate, this is really nice. Yeah. Thank uh, you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Well, um, it's been a wonderful day and it's really nice to come at the end of a wonderful day back to that essential thing which is where we live yeah. and um, I, I um, have enjoyed this very much you you talked about the temporary veranda with that image of the balcony by the sea at the beginning and you've hung your stall out completely with the vegetation uh, uh, and the incorporation of vegetation within the scheme I see it as a single building not lots of buildings I see it as one building mm -hmm. I just wanted to build on uh, what Christine uh, said and Karen by asking the question, um, those internal courtyards, they must have more than one apartment on one side of them somewhere, and there must be an acoustic issue of some order to deal with, particularly in a climate where you will be having French doors open much of the time. I'm sure you've dealt with it, but I'd like to know how you've dealt with it. it could even be solid walls on the apartment that's not owning the terrace. But I'd just like to understand that. Yeah. Um, yes, I'm going to return, sorry, to the floor plan uh, to explain that. Uh, yeah. As you can see, uh, that happens exactly here, right? So what we're trying to say is that we have all the screen here, because all these apartments are so that's a solid wall. It's, it's not good. This textile, but this wooden textile, really is really tight, depending on the privacy that you want it to create. So this part is, is completely shut. Just the leaves, winter light, the upper part, the lower part, the center is double skin. So there is acoustic control? Yes. Well, thank you very much for yeah. talking about it. Thank you. Thank you.